every time you move your body, it's like you're giving your brain a wonderful bubble bath of neurochemicals. In our next segment, we will be talking about creating healthy routines and what happens to our brains when we make room for creativity. I can't think of anyone better to do this than our next guest, Dr. Wendy Suzuki. She is a professor of neuroscience psychology at New York University, where she studies the effects of physical activity on the brain. She's an award-winning scientist, a TED speaker, and best-selling author of the book, Healthy Brain, Happy Life, which was recently made into a PBS special. Suzuki is a passionate thought leader, spreading understanding of how physical activity can change, improve, and protect the brain. Dr. Wendy Suzuki, thank you so much for being here. Let's go thank ahead and give her, a, yeah, let's give her a big round of a virtual applause. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for being here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it. I yeah. watched a couple of your TED Talks, and in it, you sort of, in one of them, you walk us through your personal journey of exercise and becoming more active yeah. and almost instantly seeing the benefits in your brain and in your day-to-day of doing so, which I think is incredibly powerful to know, to recognize, and to research and, and look more into. So yes. I really want to talk about your recent work revealing the benefits of aerobic exercise, specifically when it comes to creativity. You know, can you tell us a little bit more about that and what kinds of cognitive functions are most sensitive to exercise? Yeah, yeah. So what are the cognitive functions that are sensitive to exercise? There is an immediate benefit after every single time you move your body. Um, and the image that I like to give is that every time you move your body, it's like you're giving your brain a wonderful bubble bath of neurochemicals. And some of those <laughs> neurochemicals you've heard about before, they are dopamine, serotonin, noradrenaline. They're making your mood go up. They're giving you these great feelings of reward and pleasure in your brain. And that really does happen after, uh, after you move your body. And um, people think, oh, well, you mean, if I, if I be, become a triathlete, then I might see, see that. No, actually, um, what I like to remind people is that if you haven't been on a fitness journey and you haven't you know, really worked up your, your aerobic fitness, then in fact, you have the easiest task to get those neurochemicals up because even a walk around the block, a, a good brisk walk can start to get those neurochemicals going. So even a walk can, can get this going. And of course, if you get more and more fit, then, then you, you, you're more and more used to uh, doing bigger levels of workout. Um, yeah. But the main brain area that is so affected by exercise, and this gets to your question about creativity, is a structure called the hippocampus. The hippocampus is well known for being critical for long-term memory. It allows us to form and retain new long-term memories for facts and events. But more recent data suggests that it also is important for imagining future events a critical element of creativity. So why is exercise so good? Exercise actually can stimulate the growth of brand new brain cells in your hippocampus. And for all of us who have struggled with, oh, I wish I could remember those, you know, that person's name that, that I just met, um, that is my personal motivation to work out regularly. I Imagine shiny new hippocampal cells in my hippocampus, my hippocampus growing big and fat and fluffy with every workout. And my memory isn't only getting better, but my ability to imagine the future is also getting better based on recent studies. The thought of having my brain become big, fat, and fluffy, that image in there. I think that's, that's motivation in and of itself. Yes. Um, so thank you so much for explaining that. And I really want to get into, and maybe I'm selfishly asking this question, but I'm sure our viewers would love to know, what yeah. is the minimum amount of time that you should exercise to yeah. be able to reap the benefits of this kind of um, positive effects? Right. That is uh, the most common question that I get asked. <laughs> And sure. the answer is that it really depends on where you're starting off. And let me start with those of us that may not have a regular exercise program, but are intrigued by the idea of, well, maybe exercise, maybe I do want more shiny new hippocampal cells in my hippocampus. So what you want to do is work out and move your body so that you're, you, you're a little bit out of breath. 
Well, actually, even a walk, a good power walk for somebody that isn't used to exercise is getting to that level of, of more aerobic activity. Um, and so a simple walk can be a starting point that starts you on that journey to your big, fat, fluffy hippocampus. Let's move up. Let's say you're, you know, you work out three times a week. You then know those workouts that, that push you a little bit. The, it's not the easy day workout. It is that workout that, okay, I felt like I really worked out to get. That's the feeling that you want to get to get um, the level where you're going to get those new hippocampal cells because you're not growing them immediately. What you're doing is you're stimulating the release of a growth factor in your brain with exercise. And the more you have that growth factor, think of it as part of the bubbles in the bubble bath. The more you, you um, uh, uh, kind of uh, infuse your brain with these growth factors, the more hippocampal cells that will grow. Mm. And uh, thank you so much for that. And I think a lot of um, what may be happening oftentimes is how do I get started? How do mm. I get to the point where I can exercise and, and you know, feel those, those benefits yeah. almost instantly? You yeah. know, what, what are the four brain hacks for getting to a place where I can motivate myself enough to exercise and keep going and keep doing it? Yeah, yeah, that is a great question. And so um, here are my best tips, and, and this is what worked for me, and uh, I've seen it work for lots of other people. And the first thing is you must find a way to move your body that you enjoy. Not that somebody else says, come, come to my, you know, my scary gym and, and move tires around. It, it has to be something you enjoy. And also, you, you, you have to get, if, uh, exercise is not just going to the gym in spandex and, you know, and working out. <laughs> Move it's not. It. <laughs> no, no, it's not. And so if it includes, if you're a social person, you have lots of friends that, that you could walk with, that is your exercise. If you have a partner uh, that you like to dance or a whole group that you like to go line dancing with, I love dance and music because there you have a natural motivation of music, uh, which has always been a huge motivator of mine uh, to work out. So you have to first Think about what is that thing that I already enjoy doing? And you have to start small. Do not go and say, okay, I am going to seven days a week, I'm going to do this every single day. No, start out small. Keep it enjoyable. Yeah, I love that you say that because for many years, I've been wanting to just get into running or, for example, mm. one of my best friends loves rock climbing and that's yeah. her form yeah. of exercising. And I always thought, I can just force myself to get into it, but it doesn't lead to you know, me working out all the time. So I love that you say that. Um, and for many people right now, especially with everything that's going on in the world, um, how have you personally found ways to maintain your exercise routine and staying yeah. active when many things are closed or, you know, you're, yeah. uh, you're staying at home? How do you make sure that you can find those things that you really love and yeah. exercise within the, maybe the four walls in your home? Yeah, well, I was a little bit lucky because I had started doing at-home workouts, uh, online workouts, even before uh, everybody was shut in. So I, I found um, modalities and teachers that I really enjoyed. And um, for me, the journey was, first I went to the gym, and I had to be motivated by those great teachers that chose the best music that I liked, and motivated by all the other people around so that I would, you know, try harder. I, I try harder when there's other people looking. It's like, oh, maybe they think I'm working <laughs> yeah. out <harder>. Social <laughs> I pressure. <laughs> yeah, I motivate myself that way. Uh, but then I got motivated enough. I didn't need the, the live teacher. I didn't need the people around. I knew I, I was self-motivated enough to do that. And that's when I could stay at home and save that time of going to the gym. And so what I've been able to take advantage of that I invite everybody to take advantage of is there is truly a revolution going on right now in online fitness. All the fitness companies realized that they had a captive audience at home. Their, their you know, customers were not going to could not travel to the to the gym. Let's bring our best teachers online, and they're getting really good at it. And it's engaging, much more engaging than it used to be. And there's huge choices, and lots of different organizations are offering 
free six week memberships and things like that, that really allow you to explore the different workouts. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been exploring all those six weeks free uh, um, memberships. And I've also been taking advantage of, um, there's a lot of celebrity fitness trainers or athletes out there that are offering free workouts. So I always like to tell people, I worked out with Venus Williams and her mother. <laughs> On an Instagram live, Venus was working out with two Prosecco bottles as weights for the whole thing. It was it was great. It was you know like I felt like it was a once once in a lifetime experience. But um, yeah, there's totally. all sorts of things going on like that. That for me, it really keeps keeps it interesting, keeps it um, uh, exciting, and and uh, I'm sure that'll be the case for lots of other people as well. Yeah, and it's exciting to think that this online community that's forming allows for more people to live healthful, joyful lives from their homes. Yes, it's incredible absolutely. to me. So thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome.